Race day, race day. Got my pumpkin power kicks right here. I want to do this thing. Starting the day off right. All right, I'm here with Parker right down below in the valley in the uh, beautiful Columbia River Gorge. We're gonna run the 50K Strawberry Fields Forever down on Strawberry Island. It's a beautiful morning. You ready to do this, bro? Yeah. My map, my walk is gonna be turned on here in a minute. Here with Myron and Murph. We're gonna we're tracking our uh, our workouts here, at DDPY. Yep. This is the Strawberry Fields Forever race. Doing our 10K. Look at this crowd. Look at all these people. We're here in the magnificent Columbia River Gorge. We're gonna do this for real. <laughs> you excited, dude? Yeah. All right. Let's get after it. We're gonna do this for real, guys. This is happening. Yep. Been training all year. I'm so proud of you, man. All right, man. Uh -oh, I'm just savages. 50K. Let that sink in. 50K. Nope. And here we go. We're doing this. Hiking the hill. We're on the grinder. We're on the grinder, baby. We are. We're done, boys. We're doing good. How you doing, buddy? Ah! <laughs> okay. Almost three miles in. We're doing well. It's glorious out here in the Columbia River Gorge. My positively unstoppable crew here. And uh, just waiting on my boy. I brought him out for the 10K. And um, he had to go potty already. So that's no problem. It's no problem. We'll pick up the pace after uh, after he finishes his 10k. Okay, everybody, starting lap two on the uh, 50k ultra marathon, going uphill, a little power hike, all by my lonesome out here. I'm feeling good, feeling good. I'm working on mile seven, coming along well, so. Couldn't have asked for a more beautiful day and a more beautiful place to run. Not here. I'll catch up with you later. All right, positively unstoppable crew. I'm a third of the way done. Just past the 10 mile mark back there. I feel tremendous. I feel really good. Really, really good. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for all of your inspiration. I mean, really. The demons you guys are fighting, the battles you guys are winning in the Positively Unstoppable group. I couldn't have made it out here like this. If it weren't for you guys. I never thought I'd run 10 miles in my life. And here I am. Here I am owning it. All right, I'll check back with you in a little bit. A Positively Unstoppable Crew. Starting my third lap here, third three of five. Got a nice clean, dry change of clothes. Sweating pretty good. My family and Murph and Myron, they're cheering me on. Boy, nothing gets you pumped up like people supporting you. I lost my mom in December. Some of you might remember my why video. I got a pink wristband in support of people surviving breast cancer at my first half marathon last year. And I wore it in support of my mom, who was a breast cancer survivor, but she ended up dying of cancer in December. But I lost it at work on the railroad. It really bummed me out because I miss her. And that kind of brought me closer to her after she was gone. And I got off the train a few months ago in a usual spot that I stop to change crews. And I found it months after I lost it. My mom brought it back to me. And today I got a little urn with my mom's ashes in the back of my pack. 
she's with me. Her tenacity, her fortitude, her ability to face down her own mortality and and be unstoppable, even in the face of her own death. That's my why. That was my why to come out here and, and do this for myself, to prove to myself that I could be just as tough as her. And now she's with me. I'll check back in with you guys in a little bit. Stay unstoppable. All right, we're halfway done. 15 miles in there. Positively unstoppable crew. I wanted to speak for a second about why I'm doing this, why any of us are doing this. I'm not here fighting my own bullies. I'm not here conquering my own demons, but this race is nothing compared to the life I used to live when I was an alcoholic, when I was a drunk, when I was obese, 350 pounds. Nothing was harder than living that life. And you guys have all come so far. And no matter how hard it gets, it's never going to be as hard as the life we used to live, the life that led us here to this group. And I'm so proud of you all. And I get to celebrate all my training here in the Columbia River Gorge. Isn't this glorious? Isn't this the greatest? <laughs> Catch up with you in a little bit. Hey, Positively Unstoppable crew. 19 miles in, starting lap four out of five. I feel good, I'm tired, fatigued. I feel a little sorry for myself, but I wanted to talk a little bit about why this is a challenge and not a competition. This isn't the Positively Unstoppable competition. It's the Positively Unstoppable challenge. You know, I challenged myself to come out here and do this, but Murphy Murph, he's doing his own challenge. And he came out here, took his own time to come out here and run some of this race to support me. And next Saturday, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna run an obstacle course race with him too. And Myron, well, hey, that man's already a champion. And he drove all the way from Gig Harbor down here hours and hours this morning to be here with us. He's a 2022 Positively Unstoppable champion. You know, we're a tribe. We're a family, you guys. That's what makes this great. We're not in competition. We back each other up. And nothing could have said that more to me than my friends coming out here and sharing with this with me today. You know, Myron and Merv, it means a lot to me that you guys, that you guys came out here and did this together with me. And even more, somebody who's already achieved such a high bar for themselves to come out and to help those of us below to come up and achieve what we have to achieve. I'm up at the summit. <clears throat> A beautiful day. All right, I'll check back with you guys in a little bit. Stay tough. I'm back, folks. I'm past 21 miles now. It's further than I've ever run in my whole life. Everything that happens now is a toss up. Who knows? Might keel over. Uncharted territory. When I ran my first 5K, 12 years ago, I quit halfway through. And they had roped off the streets of Portland, Oregon for the race. And when I walked back to my family, I had to walk down a street, a city street that had no cars and no people. Everybody was cheering at the parade route. It was only 5K. It was a dark place long way since then but I had hills to climb in my life I had demons to battle and I had bullies to fight 
and I'm breaking my own records today. I'm so proud to share it with you guys. Catch up with you later. I'm back, it's lap five. Final lap, 25 miles. Set a high bar for myself today. You know, I set out to run this race, this 50K, and I didn't know I could run my last race, my half marathon last year. I just did it. And I barely finished. But something changed in me in January. I believed. I came to believe that I could do this. Then all I had to do was train. I've never doubted that I couldn't do this race, even though my knee hurts and it's giving me trouble. But I think that's why Arthur Borman's video resonates with us so much, is because he said, I can do this. He was a broken man that said, I can't do this. And things changed for me when I started believing. When I stopped dreaming and I started believing. And that was all it took. Then came the hard part where I had to do the work. But that's okay because I've had this community to help me every step of the way. This is one of the best days of my life today. What an amazing feeling to come out here and do this. Be able to be here with everybody. All right, I'll catch you back in a few miles. I'm back folks. 27 miles. I never thought my first marathon would pass by me so unceremoniously back there. I didn't even realize it happened. I remember how good I felt when I got my first 100,000K t-shirt four years ago. I was proud of that. The proudest moment of my life, when I was 16, I was made fun of a lot because I like to sing and dance and sing show tunes. And I got cast in a high school musical of Fiddler on the Roof. My dad, who came out to cheer me on here at the race today, he came to see me every single night, every show. And one night he even bought out two full rows of seats. And that meant the world to me. I've had such cheerleaders in my life. I never thought I would have so many come and be with me today while I take this challenge on. Every step I take is a broken record. Every step I take is a personal best. It feels so good to be alive. It feels good to have people believe in me. I believe in you guys too catch up with you in a few miles. Kenny's on his last lap. The pit crew is resting. Yeah. Woo! Go Kenny. Go, Go Kenny. Kenny. Woo! Woo! Well, I'm on my last mile, hiking up that last hill. 30 miles so far. I've almost made it. I'm hurting. I'm not gonna lie, I am hurting. I have seldom experienced this level of suffering, but I wanted to leave everybody with a little thought that I've had about how thankful I am to have been part of this group this year, watching everybody grow, watch everybody conquer their, their own challenges. In Mozart's Requiem, in Latin, they say, Confutatis maledictis, flamis acribus addictis, voca me benedictis. And what that means is, when the accused stand confounded and condemned to flames of woe, call me among the blessed. And today you can call me blessed. I am blessed to have come this far 
blessed that everybody has reached out to me and congratulated me and encouraged me. This is a dream come true. I'd like to say thank you to Dallas, to Dr. Tom Wallant, Pat McDermott, Nadia, everybody. I feel like I'm a hero in a movie today. I feel like I'm on top of the world. I'm almost at the top and then it's just a short jog down across the finish line. So I'll see you folks there. Stay hungry, everybody. Thank you. Hey, way to go, Kenny. Way to go. I felt that way a few times about hitting BDPY moves that I could never do. Mm -hmm. Like one day I just popped into Black Crow and I'm like, what the, what? <laughs> no, the, so the first time I was able to do Black Crow was at the PC. Yeah. Really? Because yeah, you 